Hey guys, it's Julie Malillo. I'm a life coach here in Manhattan. My website is yourdreamslifecoach.com. Today I'm going to talk about the difference between narcissists and sociopaths. Not something I do in my coaching, just a personal interest of mine because there are so many narcissists out there and a handful of sociopaths. And it can be really hard to tell the difference because they both do a lot of the same actions, but the way to tell them apart is to look at the motivation that's sort of at the root underneath that. So let's just get right to it. The, the narcissist, everything they do is basically about ego and attention. And the sociopath, everything that they do is really about avoiding boredom is their main motivation. Now, both of them are interested in power, control, often being abusive to others as well. But that's really the motivation underneath it. Sociopaths are living in a video in a video game. Because when you take away every single speck of somebody's empathy, what you really have is a video game. Okay? Because think about it, in a video game, you don't care about the zombie. You don't care if you kill the zombie. They're just it's a video game. It's not real. Now the sociopath knows that it's real, but they just don't care. The empathy part of their brain just completely doesn't work. The narcissist also doesn't have empathy, but they have often just a little flicker, like just enough to make them feel guilty for a flash for a second, and then they can convince themselves that it's fine. A sociopath usually doesn't feel guilty at all, even though they logically understand completely what they've done. You know, a narcissist oftentimes gets very confused about what reality is. Um, they think they're living in reality, they think they're always right, but they have a very blurred funhouse mirror experience of reality. Now, a sociopath lives in reality 100%. They see everything accurately. They don't have these like distortions in their mind. They really do understand exactly what they did wrong. They just don't care. The narcissist really kind of believes that what they did was okay because, well, this person was mean to me, so it's totally fine that, that I destroyed their life and ran them over with my car. Like That's how a narcissist would think. Um, a sociopath would like still know that that was wrong. They wouldn't have a justification for it. It was, you know, they would take responsibility for it. They just wouldn't care that it harmed the other person. So that's a big difference right there. Um, and again, these are all just my own, uh, my own conclusions that I have drawn from real world experience. I'm not a psychologist, so you can, you know, talk to them about the official version. Um, but this is my own sort of stuff that I use um, just <laughs> to try to, you know, avoid uh, these types of people or if I interact with them to sort of know what to expect from them because you can't avoid them all the time. You know, the reality is that most of the population is narcissist these days, in my opinion, depending on what city you're in. Um, I would think it could be up to probably 80% of the population, maybe higher, that are narcissists. Sociopaths are way rarer. In my experience, you might see one sociopath in, I don't know, maybe 100 people, maybe a few hundred people. I just don't see them pop up very often. So what are some signs that you have met a narcissist or a sociopath. And yes, there is overlap here. Sometimes you can have someone who has both. It's very rare, but you can have, for example, a narcissist who is a narcissist, but is so low in empathy that they have those sociopath traits. Um, and then you can have a sociopath with narcissistic traits who has a big ego and all of that. But in my opinion, it always comes down to it being like a little more one or a little more the other. Um, like, for example, Sam Vaken, who is um, a narcissist. I'm sorry, I'm like doing my hair as we speak. I'm multitasking. It's like kind of naughty. My hair is naughty right now. <laughs> I just like walked to the store and like the wind was blowing it. So it gets like in a giant knot. 
Anyway, Sam Bakken is a narcissist and he admits it, but he calls himself like a sociopathic narcissist. So he has some overlap there. But he still, to me, comes across as more of a narcissist, even though, you know, he admits to having those sociopath type traits. So he, you know, he does have that overlap in his mind, in his brain, where probably whatever parts are destroyed to make a sociopath and whatever parts are destroyed to make a narcissist, he has both of those parts, like destroyed enough that he feels he's both of those things. And I don't think that you know, is like super uncommon to have a narcissist with sociopath traits. Um, but I, I still feel that people are more one the other. He definitely comes across as more of a narcissist to me than a sociopath because he is driven by those ego needs that sociopaths really aren't. They really don't care. Like the sociopaths really don't care about attention, for example. So like I know Sam Balkan does a lot of speaking and YouTube videos and seems to interact with people a lot and in my opinion that's probably coming more from the narcissist um the cerebral narcissist like the brainy narcissist they like to have an audience they like to have people sort of students that they can teach um and in my opinion it seems like he gets something out of that whereas a sociopath really wouldn't get much out of that they would be looking more to just sort of scheme people and and get something out of those people but they wouldn't care much about the attention so that goes back to again the root drive of each one the narcissist cares about attention and their ego the sociopath just cares about not being bored and so they're scheming and all that I do think it looks like they want power or control, and of course they want the, the stuff, right? If they're stealing from someone, they want those items, of course. But the motivation to do it, I do think, is more to avoid this boredom. Because imagine you're in a video game, and you're walking around, and nothing's happening. There are no aliens to fight, nothing, just there's nothing there. Imagine your whole life is like that. Your whole life. You're just walking around your town, Nothing is really happening. You're not allowed to kill any of the aliens or you're going to go to jail. Think of how boring that would be. And the reason it's boring is because empathy is what gives our life meaning, richness, love, empathy. These are the things that make our days fascinating and interesting. And sociopaths can't feel any of that. So think of how boring that would be to not have any bonds or connections to people. Now, sociopaths will bond to people in terms of this person is mine, the way you feel like this couch is mine. I like this couch. It's comfortable. You know, it's mine. It's not yours. You can't take it, right? But you don't love your couch. Like, you're not going to mourn if you lose your couch. Someone spills, you know, I don't know, hot chocolate, chocolate fondue. They spill stuff all over your couch marshmallows, let's say it's a hot footage sun Sunday all over your couch, it's a huge mess, you have to throw it away, you're going to be a little bummed, like, oh, I like that couch, yeah, yeah, that couch was nice, it was comfy, oh well, got to throw it away, okay, let's look at the couch catalog, right, you're not going to sit there for a solid year and be like, that couch meant everything to me, I just can't function, I can't eat, I can't sleep, you know, you're not going to be like that, that's like the level that sociopaths bond with people. They have some kind of a bond, but it's just not really that strong. And their emotions too are very like shallow. And their emotions are shallow and fleeting. Um, so this is a main difference here. You can also tell by facial expression. Um, sociopaths... The one, the one thing that I look for, having met sociopaths in real life, um, many of which have just told me, just come out and told me that they're sociopaths, like, and again, that sort of makes sense because they don't have any shame about it. Why wouldn't they tell you? The only reason they wouldn't tell you is if they want something from you and they need to trick you in order to get that. But otherwise, if you're just like nobody to them, and like you meet them in a bar or something and they're just bored and chatting, they'll probably tell you because why not? What does it matter? Now a narcissist, most narcissists don't admit it and 
even the idea that they wouldn't be perfect puts them into a rage and they will attack anyone else. So even if anyone brings up the topic of narcissism or personality disorders, a lot of narcissists will just get triggered, go into a rage right away because on some level they know they are. So even bringing the topic up is enough to put them into a rage. Um, so you see this a lot like on online forums, even YouTube comments. If there's a video on narcissism, you're going to see a lot of comments of people saying, how dare you? How dare you discuss this topic? Who are you anyway? How dare anyone even define what a narcissist is? We should just forget all of this topic and just pretend it doesn't exist. Um, you're probably a narcissist. That's probably what you are because I'm definitely not a narcissist and so you must be one. I mean, you see these kind of like defenses that narcissists use. They go into this rage at just the mention of the topic um, or you hear common things like, well, everyone's a narcissist. Anyone who's ever used Facebook is a narcissist and like this is just narcissists defending themselves against reality because they can't stand to face reality. You're not going to see that in sociopaths. They really don't care. They have no shame about whatever they are, whatever wrong they do. They don't care. And the only reason that they would hide that, like I said, is if they want something from you. Like they have a plot. Like they want to be a parasite and have you pay the bills or something like that. Then they will go to great lengths to construct a false person persona to lie to tell you what you want to hear all of that but they, this is the difference the sociopaths knows everything they're doing they they know like okay I chose to lie I chose to the narcissist doesn't really know what they're doing and and can't admit it they have convinced themselves that no I wasn't doing that so you'd give me a free house no of course not I was trying to help you that's how a narcissist will see things. And how dare you accuse me of that? How dare you? What kind of person are you to try to accuse me of something like that? That's narcissist. Sociopath is like, yeah, I stole your house. So the sociopath has a very blank expression. Their eyes are blank. Their eyes are dead. I don't know if I can do it. Let me try. Um, it's like when I look at their eyes, it's sort of just like a gray ocean with nothing moving there's nothing coming in or going out it's just like the energy is just like dead it's like I don't know how well I did that I don't think I did a great job of that but just imagine a hundred percent blank eyes and the the rest of the face is usually pretty expressionless it's like the mouth is just straight across or sometimes you might get a smirk but the eyes are very dead. Now it's confusing because narcissists have a similar expression where their eyes look dead, but most of the time narcissists have an angry, resentful, bitter, childish look in their eye. It's like, take a four-year-old who wrongfully had their toy stolen like that's more narcissist to me and um they try to hide it, but it's weird because sometimes they like let these pictures exist and it's a very bitter, angry look. It's kind of a pretentious, I'm better than you, how dare you? Like that's like narcissism. Sociopathy is more like, I'm just here, I don't care, whatever, but I also don't give a damn if you live or die. That's the vibe you get from a sociopath. A narcissist is like, if I kill you, it will be for good reason because you forgot to take the trash out and how dare you do that. So, you know, I was doing you a favor by killing you. You know, that's a narcissist. Ugh. I shouldn't use such creepy examples because, like, it creeps me out. But I also kind of want to use extreme examples because I think it just gets that point made. Now, I'm not saying that every narcissist and sociopath kill people because they don't. The vast majority are not violent and never do. But what what separates the ones that are violent from the ones that aren't? Um, in my opinion, again, this is all my opinion, you know. This is just my experience seeing how they work. 
in my opinion, they're violent if they have less impulse control. And I mean, that's something that we see in criminals. They're not able to control themselves as much. Less impulse control. And they have an opportunity that they think they can get away with it. Um, now, this is the thing. Sociopaths are a little more, well, not a little more, a lot more in reality. They live in reality. They're aware of the consequences. Narcissists are in going in and out of reality all the time. It's like fantasy land, reality, back to fantasy land. They sort of just touch on reality and then go back to fantasy land. Okay, my video just like froze for a second. So because of that, narcissists are a little more likely to like confuse reality. And so they might be more impulsive if like, like if you're not living in reality, the idea of consequences doesn't affect you as much because it's like, but no, I get to do this crime because it's not really a crime because they stole my cookie. So then I should be able to do this. And you get into that kind of thing. So narcissists can have that problem, especially if they have low impulse control. They just can't control themselves too well. And sociopaths have a much better understanding of cause and effect. They know the consequence. They know what's going to happen. So they're better at avoiding doing crimes unless they lack impulse control in which case their boredom sort of gets the better of them and they do this horrible stuff simply because they're bored. And I mean, you guys, all this stuff is awful, by the way, but I really have to separate out how awful it is because otherwise we can't understand it. Like to get your head around how they think you have to take the ethics and the empathy out so that you can understand how they're thinking. And of course, when you step back and you see the reality, it's, it's shocking and horrible whether they are committing, you know, violent crimes or whether they're simply, simply, I shouldn't, I shouldn't say simply, whether they're um, being abusive in ways that aren't illegal in our country. In some countries, it is illegal to be emotionally abusive. In our country, it's not, which I do understand because it's a really difficult thing to define what's emotionally abusive. Um, and, and so I, I don't think that's a bad thing necessarily that we don't have laws against it because you can sort of accuse anyone of bullying and not exactly be able to to prove it and I think the danger if we did have laws like that narcissists and sociopaths could actually twist things and convince the victim of being that abusive person which usually happens anyway when when it gets to that point, you know, when someone finally realizes, oh, my partner is a narcissist and they say, you're a narcissist, the narcissist says, no, you're the narcissist. And so that's the danger there if we have laws for emotional abuse. Anyway, emotional abuse is still totally wrong and it's, you know, physical or emotional, it, it's hugely damaging to a person. And yeah, so, um, the sociopath expressions are that blank face, the smirk, they have a rage face, and then they often just have sort of a party face where they're having fun and they're just, yay, you know, I'm having fun. Um, so yeah, blank face, smirk, um, and usually their mouth is just sort of straight across and then they have their, their sort of like fun, smiley mask. That's very sociopath, you know, just, I mean, obviously just not that one, that one facial expression you couldn't be able to tell by it. Just that one thing, you have to sort of look at everything. Now, sometimes sociopaths have a maniacal grin. Usually they try to hide it, but I've been surprised to see that sometimes on social media, they will leave a picture up. That's a scary maniacal grin. And it's something that both sociopaths and narcissists do. It's like the evil, uh, I'm not doing it very well, but you can sort of get what I'm trying to go for. Just look at any villain in any movie with maniacal grin and that's what we're talking about. Both these guys do that. Um, usually sociopaths hide that a bit better because they know it looks terrifying, but narcissists don't always hide their maniacal grin like that. Sometimes they think it's funny or something. Uh, now, narcissist expressions, they have more expressions than the sociopath does. 
Their neutral is never totally blank. It's usually more of an angry look in their eyes. And it's a just very cold, seething with rage, anger look in their eyes. Um, and it's a pretentious sort of thing. It's a I'm better than you feeling. So if you look at someone's picture or you see someone and they just have an air about them, like, I'm better than you. You know, and so you'll often see, as far as posture, narcissists will do the chin up type thing. You'll see the eyebrow raise. Like, oh, I'm better than you. You'll also see a lot of childish expressions and body language because remember, they are emotional children. They stop developing at a childhood age emotionally. So they're emotionally, they might be three-year-olds, they might be six-year-olds. So you'll see pictures of people in the same pose as a child, and it's very disturbing to see. Um, let me think if I can do some. Okay, think of a pose a, like a four-year-old would do. You know, like this kind of really childish, immature, like, if you asked a four-year-old to pose for a picture, it's probably what they would do. Like, you'll see, see a grown man who's, like, lying on the floor and, like, or something. I, I'm not doing a good job of this one either. I thought I would be able to imitate this a little bit better. Um, but, yeah, look for very childish, very overdone expressions, especially in the narcissist. You're not going to see this as much with the sociopath. Sociopaths fake expressions a lot better. I don't know why that is. They're just better actors. Um, but yeah, narcissists have very so uh, an expression I see a lot in pictures is this. It's like a weird fake surprise, fake happy. And often people will have like a piece of food and they'll be like, to me, that's a very narcissist expression. Again, like just one of these traits, you can't definitively say, but most of the time it's like, if you're a normal person, why are you going to do a huge fake expression for no reason? But the narcissist, they're like, okay, a photo is being taken. I'm supposed to do a, some sort of expression. I don't know what to do. So I guess I'll do this. And it's a very common expression that you see too. So, right. So all of those um, expressions. And I mean, for sociopath, you can kind of think of like American Psycho, Patrick Bateman, and like his type of expressions. It gets very confusing though, because some personality types have a natural expression that sort of looks like that so you have to really zone in on those eyes and look at is there empathy in those eyes is there any warmth is there life is there life in those eyes okay have you ever looked at someone's face and it's just like nobody's home the lights are on nobody's home that's kind of what we're talking about here and but it's in terms of empathy so they're sort of just like a blank like like think about it that part of their brain is not working and that's going to show up like in the eyes just imagine the lights went out in entire parts of your brain. So that's kind of what you're dealing with that. With that. Um, now sociopaths are usually a lot more likable, a lot more charming when you first meet them. They're not doing things that are going to piss you off. Narcissists oftentimes will piss you off from the first moment that you meet them. It depends on the narcissist and how much, um, how, like how developed their social skills are. Some narcissists can hide this for a while, but a narcissist is usually going to come at you right away with manipulations, shallow statements, requesting information that's just super shallow. And if you're not a narcissist, that kind of stuff is very annoying. Um, like they might comment on your career and ask just the most shallow, trite, cliche question you could possibly ask. And expect you to be like, wow, what a great question. Like, that's how a narcissist will approach it. Now, a sociopath does a much better job at pretending to be normal, asking you deeper questions. And the thing is, they really want to get to know you so that they can use you 
for whatever they want you for. And they don't have that ego need. So that all comes across as less annoying, the sociopath. The, they're not trying to take anything from you in that moment, okay? So a sociopath usually comes across as very likable, maybe even giving. A narcissist is trying to take from you from the first moment. They're trying to take attention and energy from you. So you, if you're really clued into it, you can feel that from the first moment, even if they are complimenting you and, oh my gosh, I'm just... You seem so amazing, and oh, you know, when I, when I saw your outfit, I thought, oh, that person, they have a sense of style, just like I do. I mean, yeah, I, I just got this dress actually yesterday at a boutique, and it's immediately like focused on them and fishing for compliments, and it's usually pretty obnoxious, and I'm talking about mostly overts, but coverts do some similar stuff in that they are super self-focused and obsessed with themselves. So most of what they're saying is going to be I, me, and just spending too much time on topics. They might talk about that dress they bought for a good 10 minutes and you're just like, or they might talk about how they felt when they bought this dress and the store clerk just wasn't as nice to them as they expected and you know, you might get this 10 minute story and just think like, what, what's, huh? Like, I just met you. And even coverts will do that kind of self-obsessed stuff. Um, in my opinion, coverts and overts, they are different, but it's a very small difference. Very small. They have a outer veneer that's a little different, but on the inside, everything is, everything is the same. They use the same tactics. They, and they can switch from one to the other. An overt can use covert tactics and vice versa. You might, you know, normally overts are the ones that rage at people. But you can see a covert will go into a rage at people too. The minute that they feel, well, I am justified now. Now I'm going to let you have it. A covert will do that as well. And an overt will do all the passive aggressive behind your back stuff also. The stuff that a covert would normally do. So they're not really that different. Um, so yeah, you're going to get this feeling right away from a narcissist that they want attention. They want something. They're, they're signing you up for something that maybe you didn't agree to sign up for. The sociopath is also doing that, but they're hiding it really, really well to the point that you have no idea. Um... So, you know, a narcissist is just so shallow. It's like, oh, you play softball. Oh, so um, what position do you play? Okay, you play this position. You know, it's going to be like a shallow question, and then that question is going to lead right into, well, so my son plays softball, and blah, 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 blah. Ten minutes later, you know, after they tell a story with lots of pauses so that they can get that, compliment from you that applause from you and and he just won a game actually last week and we say that you know he gets it from his father but he also gets it from me because I actually used to play tennis in fact waiting for the applause you know you're going to get this kind of a feeling from it that they want that attention from you right away the sociopath doesn't want or need that attention. They don't need the applause. So you don't get that that icky feeling of, ugh, they want me to compliment them. They want me to this. They want me to, oh, very, yeah, very good. Yeah, you're, okay, you played tennis. You know, okay, good job. You know, you don't get that feeling of annoyance. The sociopath is going to be more like, oh, you play softball. Wow, that's really interesting. So how did you get into that? You seem like someone who is very athletic. That's more of a sociopath thing to say. It's like socially appropriate, socially acceptable. Seems like they're showing interest in you. But they're asking these questions to build trust and to get information out of you. So that you start saying, oh, well, you know, uh, it was actually because I was a, a really sickly kid. And then I overcame it. And then so I just always play sports so that I like, feel strong. Oh, Oh, what did you have as a kid? Oh, I, I had uh, cancer, actually, and oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Now, of course, this is fake empathy. They just copy this from movies and things like that, and you're not going to be able to see the empathy really in their eyes, but then again, most of us aren't going around looking for this. So most of the time, the sociopath will pull that wool over your eyes and be able to do all that 
you're not really going to see this come out in a sociopath until they let their guard down. So until they don't need anything from you or if they simply get bored and they um, decide to mess with you a bit out of boredom, like they're going to just play with your emotions or then you'll see the sociopath stuff come out really easily. Um, for example, I was in a bar once and I met some strangers and this girl actually came up to me. She was with her boyfriend and uh, I didn't know that she was a sociopath. It didn't even occur to me to like think that. She just was super friendly and nice. Oh, hey, like I, I really like your dress and blah, blah, blah. Oh, hey, let's all get shots. And this is so-and-so just like, oh, my new best friend, you know. But unlike a narcissist, she wasn't immediately looking for that attention from me. She was giving me attention and compliments, but she wasn't taking any back for herself. Um, and then the next thing she did was she started trying to piss her boyfriend off on purpose because she was a bored sociopath and he was a narcissist, okay? So she started doing things that he didn't want her to do. She started hitting on people at the bar. And the narcissist guy started going into his narcissistic rage, which she wanted that because she's a bored sociopath and this was entertainment for her. She really didn't care. Now the narcissist was being super abusive to her, but he felt justified and entitled because, hey, you're, you know, you're doing something I don't like, so I'm entitled to be extremely abusive to you. And this narcissist was just going through, I couldn't believe the things he was saying to her. He was calling her some of the most offensive names I've heard, screaming in her face, things like that. Now, her face was totally blank this whole time. And, I mean, not knowing what was going on, I could tell he was a narcissist. It was pretty obvious. But I didn't realize she was a sociopath. I thought that that blankness, maybe she was, like, in shock or something. Because what he was considering her flirting with people really wasn't a big deal. Like, she, like, said a few things to the bartender or whatever. It wasn't, like, out of line. It was maybe borderline. Um, offensive. It's something that normally, like, healthy people would be like, hey, hon... It's kind of making me uncomfortable you're talking to the bartender like that, right? But this narcissist went off into his ridiculous rage, threatening to dump her on the spot. And then when she continued and she wasn't gonna back down, she's like, Oh, huh, I'm still gonna I'm still gonna flirt with people though. Then he's like, Okay, it's over, I'm dumping you. You are just the worst, and just called her every awful name in the book, just trying to destroy her self-esteem, right? And then he, he storms out of the bar and he's like, I'm just going to leave you here. I'm not going to take you home. You know, you're, you're figure out your own way home. I'm not even going to help help you get there. You know, you're on your own. And um, so we're just standing there after he left. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, she must be in shock because she's just like standing there. And I'm like, OK, you know what? Like this guy is not healthy. And I'm trying to like help her because I assume she's normal. Right. And then she looks at me. And totally blankly, she says, oh, honey, don't worry. I'm, I'm a psychopath. And the thing is, psychopath, sociopath is pretty much the same thing. And she's like, like, I really don't care if he comes back or not. And the way she said it, you knew it was true. Because, like, look, if a narc said that, they would be like, look, I don't even care if he comes back or not. I don't, I don't even care. I don't care. And, like, obviously they do care because it's ego, right? And they're, they have lost their attention source sociopath really doesn't care and that came across like she was messing with him because she was bored and so I stepped back and I was like wow there's no victim in this scenario because you have two abusive people together getting their needs met by abusing each other okay so the narcissist is getting his attention he's throwing his tantrums, he's being extremely abusive, but that's not hurting her because she's an, a sociopath and she just doesn't care. And he, she knows what he's saying isn't true and she actually wants him to go into that rage because she's bored and she feels powerful like, oh, I made him go into that rage because I was bored and that makes her feel powerful. Okay, and then the narcissist is abusing her and then he's getting all this attention from her 
So, you know, even though she's abusing him, she's still giving him attention and letting him play out this roller coaster that narcissists love playing out. So he feels in control, like, oh, yes, go me. I just broke up with her. I am just the best, you know? So he's getting all that out of it. It was really weird to see that. And then basically he came and went a few times. He stormed out probably four or five times from this bar, typical narcissist. He has to keep showing up to get more attention and then abandoning her. It's a lot of what narcissists do. They show up to get their attention and then they destroy you and abandon you. And that's their cycle. So it was like his cycle was playing out super quick. Normally that would happen like, depending on the narcissist, maybe once a year, maybe once a month. It just depends on that narcissist and their abuse cycle. His abuse cycle was happening like bam, bam, bam. So then it hit me. I was like, oh, she has the blank face. I thought the blank face meant she was like in shock, but no, that's just how her face is. Like totally blank monotone everything and I could see she wasn't being affected emotionally the way anyone would be affected by someone abandoning your boyfriend abandoning you at the bar telling you that you're scum and that he never wants to see you again and he's disgusted by you anyone would be really hurt by that she was taking amusement in it um and you could see there was just no emotional reaction and she said to me to be honest, like, I don't really care if he comes back or not. And I was like, wow, she really doesn't care. Okay. So that's a good illustration, I think, of the differences between the sociopath and the narcissist. Yes, they're both abusive. They're abusive in different ways. They come across in different ways. Um, so sociopaths will mess with you for amusement because they're bored or because they want something. And... The difference, though, like if you catch a sociopath um, doing these things, they'll often just come clean and be like, oh, right, yeah, I did that. They just don't care, though. They're not going to, like, justify it or excuse it. Most of the time, they don't see a reason to. It's just, yeah, I, I chose to do that. So what? Um, so when they apologize, it reminds me of there's a... a Billy, how do you say her name? Eilish? Billy Eilish? Eilish? No, it's Eilish. I really like her, her songs. And she has some songs that I feel like she has written from the point of view of a sociopath. And it like creeped me out the first time I heard these songs because I was like, wow, like there's a song where she's like, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, psych. And that's a sociopath. Like, they're saying sorry for some reason, but they know the whole time it's not real. A narcissist will confuse themselves, and they'll sort of, like, think their apology is real. Um, and then they just, they feel justified when they're hurting people. They feel like, well, I should be able to hurt them, though. Because, you know, they didn't compliment me on my promotion, so I should be able to destroy their life. Why I should be able to be violent because they disagreed with me. How dare they disagree with me? I should have every right to beat them up. And we see these kind of things in politics a lot where people say like, oh, you're being violent to me because you disagree with me. That's a narcissistic way to think. Or to think that they're allowed to be violent to someone who disagrees with them. Again, not living in reality. No sense of logic. The ego is driving the bus there. Okay, And a sociopath you wouldn't hear that from a sociopath. No, a sociopath might be violent just because they're bored or because they want something, but they're going to know it's wrong. They just don't care that it's wrong, but they're not going to be confused about it. But the confusing part is that sometimes a sociopath will try to convince you that what they did was okay if they want something from you. And they will use a lot of the same tactics as a narcissist would. But the difference is they know that it's BS. They know everything out of their mouth is a lie. Narcissists sometimes know what they're doing is a lie. And they take pride in it. But it's usually a minority of the time. A small percentage of the time are they really aware of what they're even doing. 
So a narcissist might like cut in line and say, huh, aren't I so smart? Look at me, I'm cutting in line. And they're just going to let me because they're like afraid to tell me no. Or a narcissist will go out to dinner with a group of people and then say, hey, I'm not even going to put in any money on my check, but they're going to be too embarrassed to call me out because they know that's like rude to say, hey, you know, you didn't put your money in. So I'm just going to get a free meal. Isn't that great? I'm so awesome. And they'll like brag about these things and take pride in it. Sociopaths almost never brag about anything. They don't need to. They don't need that attention. They just don't brag. Um, so it's a lot, in a way, it's easier to be around a sociopath because they're less annoying in the moment. They're equally destructive long term, especially if they want something from you. And the fact that they both want power and control is probably the most dangerous thing about it because these are people who are like willing to enslave other people, take their rights away, destroy people, reduce people to basically farm animals to just serve whatever need. You, you know, if they had it their way, they would be the ruler of the earth and they would just have everyone living in kennels and they would, you know, just have a, a world of slaves. Like that's what their dream really would be. Um, so both of these types will often say things like, uh, that they want to rule the world or that a narcissist will be more likely to say like they deserve to rule the world or they would be ruling the world if it weren't for all these annoying people that, that messed up their dream for them. And a sociopath, um, is, is not really blaming other people. You very rarely hear them blame anybody, and you very rarely rarely hear them brag either. But they also have this fantasy of ruling the world because, number one, they're bored. Number two, they want that power and control. They get a little high off of it. They get a high off of messing with people and feeling that they're superior in some way. But it's just different than a narcissist who needs to feel superior, who needs that attention, the narcissist has an extremely fragile, broken down ego that's in constant need of repair. It's a collapsing every moment, and that's why they're desperately stealing from other people to patch up their ego. The sociopath's ego is like intact. It's confident. It's like a robot. There's nothing vulnerable about it, but there's also no emotion whatsoever to the point that they don't even have a flicker of guilt, which is why they have nothing to feel guilty about. They have nothing to justify to themselves. That's how they're able to live in reality. The narcissist is like, oh shoot, I did that. I'm a horrible person. Okay, now I have to put all this negativity and blame it on someone else so I can get rid of it. Who can I blame it on? Okay, it, it was your fault. It's the government's fault. It's the this, it's the that. And I mean, that's the society we're living in. Look at how many people blame all their problems on someone else. That's a narcissist. Sociopath isn't going to blame other people for anything unless they're actively manipulating someone that they want something from. So, okay, if I'm a sociopath and I want to live rent-free in your apartment, I might start telling you a lot of reasons why, you know, a lot of manipulations to try to get you to do that, but I'm going to be aware that I'm lying to you, you know, and I might say, you know, you'd be a horrible person if you put me out on the street, you know, and, you know, and they will do those manipulative tactics, they'll play the victim, well, you know, my life is just so hard that, but there's a slight difference. It's like, there's less of a sense of urgency and there's almost a sense that they don't exactly believe what they're saying. They'll say it to you and they'll, they'll try to get, manipulate you with those emotions, but it's a little more detached. The narcissist is more like enraged in your face. Like they're more like a actor on stage who's trying to, make you feel something and they they believe what they're saying they really believe that you ruined their life by disagreeing with them on politics and so they're justified in beating you up because how dare you do that to them beating you up was nothing compared to you disagreeing about the constitution how dare you do that you deserved every punch that's how a narcissist thinks a sociopath will be like, you know, it's really mean of you to like not let me live in your house because 
you know that I'm so stressed out. You know that, like, with my aunt dying, I've just been a mess. And you're just going to put me out anyway. That's more like a sociopath. And it's less attacking, even though they are playing the victim. They're trying to get you to pity them. And the narcissist is a perpetual victim. They're a victim, like, every moment. That's just, like, their state of being is to look at the world from a point of view as a, of a victim. And the narcissist is flip-flopping between being the bully and being the victim. But in their mind, they're always the victim. So if they're being a bully, the narcissist still sees themselves as the victim. Well, I only had to be the bully because you did these terrible things to me or because the patriarchy was just suppressing me. And I just had to, you know, it's that victim mentality even when they are bullying the sociopath doesn't play those games. They just know they're evil. They don't care that they're evil. They think like, well, yeah, hey, I have this superpower over other people where I can just kill someone and not care. This is great. I wish I could use this more. Maybe I should go in the military and be a sniper so I can just mow people down. That sounds good. Um, and I'm in no way saying that everyone in the military is a sociopath by any means. You know, there are people who do jobs like that and really do have very high empathy and simply want to protect their country. Um, but just kind of looking at the sociopath mentality. So they are very, very different. Um, but in general, most people don't really spot sociopaths uh, unless you're actually living with one for a long time. You're not going to see it. They hide it so well. They have their different personas that they play. They have masks, just like narcissists do. And um, I would say the sociopaths tend to be a little more socially skilled. They're better at fitting in. Oh, and another big difference is that the narcissist has very high anxiety. They're jumpy. They're stressed. They're tense. They're enraged. They're this. They're that. The sociopath is blank, calm. They have a lack of anxiety. Now, it's not that they can never feel anxious ever. They'll probably get a little anxious for a job interview, something like that. But in general, they don't have much anxiety. And some studies show they don't have a startle response. If you startle a narcissist, they're going to jump. How dare you? You know. And if you startle a sociopath, it's going to be like, what are you doing? Why are you standing next to me saying boo? Okay. Like, that's like a sociopathy. They're not an anxious type of person. I have seen sociopaths in anxiety-inducing situations, and I've seen them not react. Another reason they're really good in the military. Let me give you an example. I was driving with a narcissist, and the narcissist, I'm sorry, I'm sociopath. Gosh, I hope I didn't use the wrong term other times during this video. I don't think I did though. Okay, I was driving with a sociopath. The sociopath accidentally drove onto the train tracks, okay? This was in Arizona. And, and basically they had just gotten this light rail train that was going through the city and it never used to be there. So like this was a surprise to me, this was here. The signage was not good, there was not much warning. So anyway, neither of us saw it, and all of a sudden we're just, we're sitting on train tracks. The little arm goes down on top of the car. So like the train track, okay, let's say the train track is here. The train. Uh, what could I use for the train? Okay, the train is going to be this T light. This is the train, okay? Our car is like here where the train would be coming, okay? That little arm that comes down to stop your car is in the middle of the hood of the car. The train is coming, the car is here, and I'm, I'm screaming, back up, back up, there's a train coming, back up. And there's not much time. There's like seconds until this train comes. And I, I look at this sociopath. He's not shaking, he's not moving, he's just... Oh, I've never seen someone back up a car so slowly. There was no sense of urgency. There was no rush there. It was as if 
a train wasn't coming. That's how their anxiety is. Whether a train is coming, a train is not coming, they're going to react about the same. I was freaking out. I was ready to jump in the next seat over and reverse the car for him. <laughs> and um, he just barely was able to reverse the car in time. Like, we backed up and then the train came. And then there was, like, a dent in the hood of the car from the that arm that came down. Um... Not like a huge dent, but there was a dent. And then in the aftermath, we're sitting there watching this train go by in front of us. And I'm like, we almost died. And he's like, ah, no. It was just, it wasn't like, now a narcissist would be like, ah. And they'd pretend to be like that. Or it would be a defense against reality. It'd be like, oh, well, I don't care that a zombie almost attacked me. I didn't even care about zombies anyway. That's a narcissist. The sociopath truly just didn't care because there was no fear response. It was like the weirdest thing. I just couldn't believe it. I was like, how can you not? I was like shaking after the fact, you know. I must have had to scream at him five or six times to back up. And I, it wasn't that he was doing it on purpose to freak me out. It wasn't that... He was just kind of slow in his thinking. Like, he just didn't have that reaction time. So that's an interesting thing, too. Personally, my own theory is that sociopaths are not good at sports because you have to have very fast reaction time in sports. So in a sport that you need a fast reaction time, right? Um, like... It probably wouldn't matter in something like maybe running where you have time. You know, you don't have to have a fast reaction time. You just need to, like, run fast, right? But in a sport like, you know, tennis or soccer or something that you have to be very quick and responsive, I don't think they would do as well, in my opinion. Probably a narcissist would do fine because they're extra anxious. Um, but just from what I've seen, sociopaths are slow to react. They don't have the startle response their fear is very low. Now that's not to say that they never get nervous, they can still have nightmares, and they can still have things that they're afraid of. Like they can be afraid, um, for example, this sociopath was afraid of ghosts, which sort of makes sense because ghosts um, don't play by human rules, right? So it might sort of be like, oh shoot, this might be the one thing that can get me. A lot of sociopaths are afraid of jail. They don't want to go to jail. They're already bored out of their minds. The idea of being bored all the time is not a good idea for them. But usually it's the ones, again, that have the low impulse control. They can't control themselves, you know, and they tend to commit more crimes. And personally, in my, mind, in my opinion, their mind is just even more damaged. So you have an extremely damaged brain that not only as the narcissist portion is fried, the sociopath portion is fried, meaning it doesn't work. And then on top of that, the controlling yourself part is fried too. You just have more and more brain damage. Um, I was talking to someone recently, it was interesting, there was a study about how high pollution in areas is linked to high crime rates. And I was thinking, well, some types of pollution are actually heavy metal from cars there's a heavy metal that comes out of that and heavy metals get stored in fat your brain is mostly fat heavy metals get stored in the brain and when they're stored in the brain it causes inflammation it causes damage and with enough metals stored in the brain who knows it might be able to destroy areas of the, the function of that brain so and then this person told me that um they have found that in in criminals, like in jail, they have much higher heavy metal rates in their bodies than the rest of the population. So that makes sense. There might be a link there. Um, and so to me, uh, basically, a narcissist is someone who has slightly less metals than a sociopath. A sociopath has more. That's my personal opinion. I actually think the overt narc has the most. The covert narc has... Um, oh, okay, let me put this in the correct order. The normal person who has empathy doesn't have that many medals. 
to the point that their brain hasn't been destroyed. A covert narcissist has enough metals that it's destroyed most of their empathy center, but there's a flicker there, enough that they can feel that they did something wrong more so than an overt can. They can feel more shame than an overt can. They might cry about what a bad person they are and how they don't like themselves. Overts, overts really won't do that. So overts have a little bit more metal. So that covers up their guilt and shame even more. But they have enough guilt and shame that they have to justify and blame everyone else for what they do, which shows they have some flickering there for that to make them feel uncomfortable. And the sociopath has the most medals to the point they don't have any shame at all. And um, they can just do these things and it just doesn't affect them. They don't have to blame anyone else. They can know 100% what they did, whether they're lying about it or not, and they just don't care. And then um, there's, of course, also the being able to control yourself. And I don't know exactly where that falls in the continuum, but I would imagine it would be the more extreme metals, um, though it's possible you could have someone, and, you know, because basically what part of the brain is destroyed, just like when one part of your, of your brain is destroyed, you might be blind, or you might be deaf, or you might not be able to move your legs, or whatever, depending on what part it is. Um, as you see in people that have had like strokes, for example, and they can't use maybe one side of their body, depending on but it's, it's where it is in the brain that the destruction happened. So it seems like someone might be able to just have the part of the brain destroyed that was impulse control. And maybe they're not even a narcissist or a sociopath. I don't know. But it seems like most of the time it's sociopaths and they also have no impulse control. And occasionally narcissists too. So I think they have very, very high metals in the brain probably could do that. And those metals, you know, they come from the environment, like the pollution. Some of it comes from food. Um, there are still metals in most of the vaccines, like the flu shot. Um, you've got aluminum, you've got mercury. And then, of course, you have the body burden that's passed down on the mom's side. So the mother's metals that are stored in her fat and tissues go to her firstborn child the most. And then it filters down through the rest of the kids. So the firstborn gets the most dose of metals from that mom's body. The mom's body is actually offloading her metals into the fetus. Could be a reason that, that some um, women have miscarriages too, possibly, in my opinion. Because if you have a fetus that's so full of metals, it probably can't even survive. And we have higher miscarriage rates these days as well. And often in families, you'll see the firstborn is the most personally disordered. They'll be more likely to be a sociopath, an overt narc, a more loud, obnoxious bully type in people that have lots of metals. I'm not saying every firstborn, of course. And then it seems to dwindle. And in families that have more kids, oftentimes fourth, fifth kid will have empathy, even if the firstborn is like a sociopath. So it's kind of interesting, though. You have exceptions to that because you could have exposure to metals in pregnancy, I've seen women that broke a thermometer in pregnancy um, and then had very high metals in that child and that child only. So there's exceptions to that as well. And some of it's from food, but that goes through your stomach, so it has a different effect. If you think about it, a snake bite kills you because it's bitten into your bloodstream. If you were to eat that venom, it would have no effect on you because it goes through the digestive system which protects you from that venom, and it wouldn't kill you in your stomach like that. Okay, so I don't know if I covered every single thing. I probably didn't go in as much to how it plays out in a relationship, and like the way they abuse you is different, sociopath versus narcissist. But I hope this gives you just like some idea of the main differences and motivations, because all too often I see stuff in the media that talks about sociopaths and narcissists as if they're the same thing. They're definitely not the same thing. They're very, very different brains. They're both abusive. They're both dysfunctional, but they're just so different and they come across differently. And anyway, I hope that was helpful. Now, um, I don't deal with personality disorders in my coaching because I'm not a therapist or a psychologist. I'm a life coach. But what I do deal with in my coaching is helping you to attain your goals faster. 
looking at the future and focusing on the present. So we don't talk about the past a lot. So if you've had a bad experience with a sociopath and narcissist both, you'd want to go to therapy and you could talk about the past and your trauma with them. But the way coaching would work is we would look at your life now, we would define the things that you want for your life, and then we would make a plan going forward to achieve those things faster. So if you're interested in coaching, you can go to my website, yourdreamslifecoach.com, and you can go to the contact form page and just tell me a little bit about yourself, like what your goals are, like are you looking for friends, a relationship, career change, business, uh, starting a business, meaning in life, feeling more confident, you know, any of these things we can work on in coaching. And then I will email you rates, so make sure you include your email address. Otherwise, I have nowhere to send uh, the PDF rates to. Okay, so thanks for watching, guys. And please like, comment, subscribe. I appreciate it.